Hello everyone, welcome back to another Sketch and Principle tutorial. Today we're starting inside of Sketch, looking at a screen I just designed. We have some scroll content here, and we have some filters. So this could be like a messaging app or a dating app where we have some content, and we have some filters with which to filter the content. One thing to note about the design before we go to animate is the spacing I chose for each of these filters. So as you can see, these are spaced 10 pixels apart. That's consistent throughout. Also 10 pixels in between the scroll content and this filter here. Another thing to take note of is the height of each of these filter rectangles. So as you can see, the height is 55 for each of these. Lastly, we have this arrow here, which is facing upwards. But when we actually begin to scroll and collapse each of these filters, the arrow is going to change direction. So just take note of the starting position of this arrow. But now we are ready to send this to principal. So I'm going to select this artboard. I'm going to head into principal. I'm going to hit import, import selected artboards. And here we are looking at our design inside of principal. The first thing I'm going to do is select this content here, and we're going to select vertical scrolling. I'm going to move the scrolling box to the top of the second filter. There's still going to be a space in between the end of the scrolling and the first filter. And let's just move the bottom of the scrolling to the bottom of the artboard. And let's select clip sub layers. So when we go to our preview now, you'll see we can scroll within the constraints of this bounding box here. Now that our scrolling is set, we can use drivers to start animating these filters and create this collapsing effect. So let's select the first element that we're gonna drive. So in this case, we're gonna drive this favorites filter by the scroll position of this content down here. So with this favorites filter selected, let's head up to the, the header up here, select drivers. And now we're gonna add keyframes for that filters opacity and center Y, so the Y position. So we're gonna drive the opacity and the center Y by the scroll position. That's what this scroll Y indicates. So now in the driver window, you can see that we can scrub the Y position of that scroll content. So what I'm gonna do is zoom in and we wanna scrub to the point where the scroll content is flush with the top of that first filter. So it's actually gonna be 65 pixels to be exact because remember each of these filters, the height of each of these filters is 55 plus the 10 pixel um, gap in between them. So 55 plus 10 is 65. So let's add keyframes for the opacity and the center Y. And then once we reach this point with this filter selected, we can take the opacity all the way down and we can move the Y position of that filter up until it is directly on top of the next filter. So that looks about right. So now if we go back and scrub through this, you'll see that this filter starts to collapse and fade out. So it's moving up and it's fading out. We get this collapsing effect. Next, we can just repeat this process with the second filter. So with this near me filter selected, we can do the same thing. We can add center Y and opacity keyframes. And now we're just gonna drive these elements. So, but this time we're starting at 65 pixels. So we're gonna scrub up until the content is flush with the top of this filter. So right there, 65 times two is that 130. We can add keyframes. And with this filter selected, we can do the same exact thing. So let's fade this one out and move the height accordingly. So make sure this filter is on top of the, the next one. So that looks about right. So now we can scrub through this driver window and see what it looks like. So it looks like this first filter is kind of pushing that, or sorry, it looks like the content is kind of pushing these filters up as we scroll and they're fading out, creating this collapsing effect. Awesome. So let's just repeat this process with the last filter and we'll be back. So I repeated this process, but this time I was driving the opacity and the center Y of this recent filter. That's what these keyframes represent. So if I scrub through this now, 
you'll see that all of the filters collapse. And something I don't like, I don't really like this gap here in between the filter and the scroll content. I think that looks kind of weird. So what we can do is with the scroll content selected, let's just bump up the bounding box a little bit. And I think this looks a little bit more natural. Um, you may disagree, but I don't know, for the sake of this tutorial, we can just leave it like this. So we get this awesome collapsing effect. There's one more thing I want to do, and that is change the direction of the arrow so that by the time all of these filters are collapsed, the arrow actually rotates 180 degrees. So what I'm going to do is select this arrow now, and we're going to drive the arrow by the scroll Y as well. So this time we're going to drive the angle of this arrow. So starting here, we're going to scrub to the end, add another keyframe for this angle. And then with this arrow selected, we can just rotate the arrow 180 degrees like so. So let's see what this looks like when we scrub through the driver window. Let me just expand this a little so you can see. So watch the arrow. Very cool. And this indicates to the user that the um, filter window is ready to be expanded again. So if I wanted to design another screen now and have the user tap on this arrow, it would indicate that the filter window, or sorry, it would indicate that all the filters are going to, going to expand. So nice little touch, really simple to do inside of principle using drivers. And we can preview this live. So let's just open the preview and we can scroll. And this feels really natural because the arrow is rotating at the same rate that we're scrolling. So pretty cool. And yeah, that's pretty much the animation guys. Pretty cool collapsing filter menu effect. If you guys liked this video and found this tutorial helpful, please give a thumbs up. Comment with what you want to see next. I love reading your guys' comments. Uh, subscribe for more and also follow me on Instagram. I usually post on there before uploading new videos. So if you guys don't want to miss any updates, I will link my Instagram below in the description. But yeah, I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Thanks again.